you know, thing, child molestation, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That will happen to somebody that attracts it to themselves because of their emotions. Um, yeah, but be careful here. We, we're not looking for blame here, are we? We're just looking for truth. Yep. There's a big difference between blame and truth. Okay, where am I blaming? I'm not understanding. All right, so, so what, I want, what I want to make sure is that, yep. that you understand the law of attraction certainly causes every event in everyone's life, mm -hmm. right? But the truth is that the person themselves has an emotion in them that attracted these events. But that emotion may not have been created by themselves. Of course. Of course. So it's important to understand okay. that. So this soul has an emotion. Let's look at child molestation, for example. The soul's emotion happened because the parent, so here's the mother, she's probably been abused right? by, by a male, if, if, if the child is getting abused by a male. So the mother is abused by a male. When she's, when she's conceived the child, the mother's emotions of being abused by men enters the child. And if it's a girl child, it enters the, it enters the girl child in, a, in almost identical manner that it's in the mother. Right? So straight away the girl child, before it's even born, has this emotion of, I am abused. Right? This is because the mother never chose to deal with her emotion of being abused. Now when that happens, the girl's born and as she's growing, she is going to attract people around her who are willing to abuse her. It's not her fault, is it? It's because of the parents not dealing with their emotions about the abuse that they're holding onto, or multi-generational abuse that's being held onto, that caused that emotion to enter that child. Right? But it is true that she is abused because of the emotion that's happened inside of her. The emotion that's now there. So then that child would just need to simply work with that emotion? Well, remember I said the best thing is for the, the parent to work through her emotion. Yeah. So if the child is abused, the first thing the mother needs to look at is her own history and her own abuse and her own feelings and her own stuff that she's denied. And the first thing, if the father was the abuser, the first thing he needs to look at is all of his emotions of abuse. Right? If they really want to stop what's happening to the child. Once they do that, the child's emotions will automatically disappear. And so she will no longer attract abuse. Right? This is, parental responsibility is so great that everyone needs to understand it. It's so great. Are all the emotions from the parent passed to every single child? Because I'm looking at that and thinking, well, okay, I know somebody where it's passed to one daughter and it's kept going on, but it hasn't passed to the other. Yep. And it's not passed to every single child because it depends on the, it'll, a lot on the emotions that, that the mother and father were feeling right in that very important phase of gestation, you know, when, when, the, when the child was in the womb. So, like, I've had uh, situations where we've, we've been talking to a mother and she's got two or three children, and I asked her, what emotions were you feeling with this first child? And she was going through some emotions of real deep unworthy feelings and stuff that she tried to suppress. And she was feeling really angry with her husband. And there was a boy child being born. And when he was born and he started growing up, he identified with her. And now he's really angry with men, so he's angry with himself and he treats himself badly as a result and so forth. The next child might be a girl. And because of the gender issue, may have a totally different response to the same emotional injury. Right. So the emotional injury enters you, but your response to the emotional injury depends upon your personality yeah. and your gender and your sexuality <coughs> and all sorts of other issues that are a part of your personality that it affects. Does that make sense? So that's why in a, in a, you'll see this in animals too, by the way. Um, you ha if you have three dogs, each dog might have different personality and each dog will respond differently to your emotion. Right? Actually, let's ask the lady up the back. Um, yep. So, with that example you used before, if it was a son, would it have a different effect? Yes, uh, if it was the son, and the mother will be projecting automatically lots of hatred towards men if she's not <coughs> dealt with her abuse. So the son will feel that men are hated. Right? And he might then try to always be conciliatory to women because he's always feeling that he needs to make a woman feel better because of his mum's emotions. Or if he identifies with his father, he may abuse women 
that just depends on who he identifies with as part of his personality. But a lot of times you see males who have had mothers who have been abused go and they, you know, they attract relationship after relationship after relationship of women who have been abused. And they're looking after them, they're always trying to nurture them and look after them all the time. 